The Outstanding Doctoral and Research Universities Professor of the Year is Michael Wesch, Assistant Professor of Cultural Anthropology at Kansas State University. Introducing Professor Wesch is his former student, Kevin Champion. Kevin, will you please come forward? It's, it's truly an honor to be here to introduce Dr. Ma Dr. Wesch on such a momentous occasion. I first met Dr. Wesch in the spring semester of 2005 after enrolling in his course, Religion and Culture. Now, he doesn't know this, but I didn't actually want to take the course from him. <laughs> I, I had just, you see, I had just returned from a semester abroad in Spain, uh, and I had returned eagerly anticipating taking the course from another professor who had been teaching it for several years. Now, as it turns out, while I was away, that professor retired, and the department hired Dr. Wesch. Um, I was pretty disappointed by the news when I heard it, and, and, and also a bit, a bit skeptical that this new professor that I had never heard of before could do the job. Well, not only was I wrong in my skepticism, but it turned out that taking this course from Dr. Wesch uh, dramatically changed the trajectory of my life. Uh, Dr. Wesch taught me, oh, it was the best course that I ever took, let's put it that way. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Wesch taught me that teaching and learning is about asking really good questions, not about finding answers. And from the day that course ended to this day, I have remained close by learning from him how to ask good questions and how to inspire others to ask good questions. Dr. Wesch is a ama truly amazing and innovative teacher. He has an innate ability to inspire and to motivate. But what sets him apart is the way that he genuinely lives his life. One of his core teachings to introductory students in anthropology each semester is a set of principles that uphold the discipline. Empathy, thoughtfulness, and communication. While it is somewhat unique that he takes time to teach these core human values uh, to, in, to 400 students a semester, it is absolutely extraordinary in the way that he so fully embodies these values in the way he leads his life. It's a privilege to be here to introduce Dr. Wesch and also to repeat a statement that I've often made about this man who's had such an indelible impact on my life. If I can, in my life, manage to profoundly affect as many people as I see him affect in a single semester, I'll consider it a, a life very well led. Thank you. Now I have to come up here all teary-eyed. <laughs> um, it's really been an amazing journey. I do teach this, these big uh, Introduction to Cultural Anthropology classes, about 400 students every semester. And most of the students come in, they don't even know what anthropology is. And 13 years ago, I was actually one of those students myself. Um, and I had to look it up before I went the first day. And when I walked in, I met the guy that he wanted to have as his teacher, and that was, <laughs> that was uh, Dr. Marty Ottenheimer, and I, and, uh, I remember, you know, he, he spoke really smoothly and serenely, and yet he was constantly sort of launching these intellectual firebombs into the audience and blowing minds, and my mind was blown, and, and just like Kevin said, he's the one who sort of inspired this idea that's questions that matter, not the answers, because he didn't offer me any answers. He didn't even help me find my own answers. He, he helped me find new questions I'd never asked before. And so I was on, suddenly on this lifelong quest, asking question after question after question. And so then, uh, soon after that, I became a TA for that class. And so this is my first chance to teach in a university environment. I led a recitation every Friday of like 20 students. And on the first day, um, I had to reach up for this retractable screen, and I was wearing these shorts, and I stepped up on this, sh on this uh, chair, and I get this retractable screen, I pull it down, and I, I come down, and my, uh, my shorts caught on the chair as I was coming down. <laughs> And they ripped my shorts all the way up the side. <laughs> and so you could see my underwear is like flapping all around. And, and I honestly don't remember anything else about that day. <laughs> except, except that I remember this, this, like, this memory etched into my brain, like walking home. I, was, I felt like I was floating home. I was, I, I was having a peak experience. I just, that I, I loved everything about that day. Whatever happened that day, it was amazing. And, and I left that day knowing exactly what I wanted to do. So then, as luck would have it, seven years later, I was returning back from my PhD field work in Papua New Guinea, just as Dr. Ottenheimer was retiring, and I was hired to, hired to take his place. So there I was, back in that same room where the journey started, but on the other side of the podium. And unfortunately, you know, the questions I was hearing from my students were not the same sort of 
mind-blowing questions that, I, that Ottenheimer had in, inspired in me. There were questions like, you know, what do we need to know for this test? And you know, like, like, how long does this paper need to be? That kind of thing. And uh, I, about mid-semester, I became really frustrated with these questions. And I literally threw out the syllabus. I went in front of my students. And I, I was just really frustrated. I said, you know, does it really matter what you need to know for this test? Does it matter that you've memorized all this material for the test? Are you actually going to remember it 12 years from now? And I asked them to go on a journey with me to answer real questions that even I didn't know the answer to. Questions not like, what do we need to know for this multiple choice test, but what do we need to know for this test of our lives? And ever since then, it's been a remarkable journey that I've been on with my students. And so I wish today that the thousands of students I taught could be standing here with me. In a way, I feel like they are. Um, but I think if they were, they would definitely want to thank the administration at K-State for not just supporting me, but actually, you know, funding <laughs> some of the things we do. I, don't, I can't think of any other university that would actually support some of the crazy things we do in our class. And it, you can check YouTube if you want to see. <laughs> just look us up on YouTube. We do some pretty remarkable things. Um, and I, I would also have to thank my parents. Uh, they have a sort of boundless love, not only for me, but for everybody. And they raised me in a small Nebraska town, and this was a kind of town where a trip to the grocery store was a major social event. And <laughs> I remember following my parents around in those grocery stores, and, and they would you know, stop and talk to everybody and really listen to everybody. And I think that it was those experiences that have really shaped the way I engage with students still today, and my optimism for the world as well. And finally, I'd want to thank my wife, Sarah, <laughs> who's in the back there. Um, she, we, she was actually a TA with me um, back when I was first a TA. So we've been together ever since. And uh, she's been, her wisdom has really like, helped me along this journey all the way. And I'll just say one little story about this. Um, before I stepped in front of those 400 students for the first time, I was really anxious. And Sarah calmed me with these wise words that I hold with me still today. And I, I say them to myself every day, every time I come in front of an audience, in fact. She said, love your students, and they will love you back. And so I'd just like to thank Sarah for those words of wisdom and for increasing my understanding of love and my capacity for loving. Thank you. Thank you. That's a lovely thank you very much. You, you, you didn't see that. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're kind of smiling. Yeah. <laughs>